Now, I understand that you are the treasurer of the Armanda Gunderson's Foundation for the Homeless, Hopeless, and Great Unwashed. That's correct. It's just one of my many ways to help serve my parish. And you're quite a writer, too. That book you wrote, the one about all the big numbers. Ah, plethora of myriads and, uh, other large amounts. And other large amounts. You know those chapters about the mind with the high-stakes gambler? Very insightful writing, Preach. My brother-in-law used to have a gambling addiction, and he said that he felt like you knew him better than his cellmate, Intimate Steve. A lot of the unfortunate souls I serve for the Foundation being for such a hell. And that chapter about bending the odds in your favour through prayer, you call it the- Ah, oh, the Jesus factor, yes. Lord loves a sinner. In that case, Padre, you and our Lord must have the honeymoon suite with champagne on ice. How dare you! I'm not finished. The hotel. It's in Bangkok. This is libelous! No! This is libelous. You were talking about slander. Trouble is, Big Daddy, I can back this bad boy up. You see, the Armand Gunnison's foundation for the homeless, hopeless, and great unwashed is in trouble. Seems large amounts have been disappearing ever since you took over his treasure. Well, every penny's been accounted for. I know, I've seen the budget. 750k on floss. Truth is, you've been skimming off the foundation for years. Trouble is, the number's been getting bigger. Your fingers are browning, your teeth are like sweet corn, and that tick? You've been hitting the coffee and the cigs like a pimp hits tricks. Tell me, Pedro, what's so stressful about a priest these days? What, you, uh, you read the wrong gospel on the wrong day? Baptized the wrong baby? Buried somebody upside down? Hey, who cares? But that box of matches you tossed me earlier, they're King Solomon's casinos, right? What's the matter, Hank Green? Mr. O found out about your little scam? No, that's not... Threatened to withdraw his patronage? No! 2.4 mil, that's a lot of collections on Sunday service, Pedro. I couldn't help it, damn you! The more money I took, the more I lost, the more I had to pay back. These people, uh, they don't tolerate late payments. They found out where I kept my little dog. The first time I was late, they waxed my little dog and paid a fat child to take terrible pictures. Second time, they glazed my little dog in honey and took him to a zoo. A zoo for wasps! The third time, they named my little dog to the wall. It could have been worse. Little dog's name would get my testicles. God damn. They just needed my numbers to come up once. Just once. Howard wouldn't listen to reason. So I let myself into a study that night. I had to know what he had on me. I didn't kill him! I'm a man of the cloth, for Christ's sake! Well, I hope you're a better priest than you are a gambler. Otherwise, you're not shit priest. Truth is, Mon Père, you too had your serves cut short. I, uh, saw the light? You saw the headlights, Your Holiness. Mr. Hussain! The surveillance tape showed that you pulled up with a senile Mrs. Armand de Gondenson around 10.15, is that right? For sure. And you two were where beforehand? <coughs> <coughs> Yo ho was kicking with the ashes over at the home and chilling in the benzo like a UFO bumping to dope she at and chewing and she at cock strike dying but her face got blurred dying 15 and was pulling up curb tie. Luckily I'm good with languages. I speak five English and ghetto. You said five languages. I never said I was good with numbers. So you put the goat to pasture and... I dipped. And finally to me pad catching cups in a nano. Didn't stir till I heard you all. But pictures from the night show that your bed was made. Suggesting that either you didn't sleep in it, or when you heard the sirens you made the bed before leaving the room. So now our brother ain't cool to make his own bed? Is that what you're saying? What is? Pick the tail on the black man day? No, it's Friday. There's no tail and you're not black. What you are doing is trying to cover up the fact that you are sleeping with someone in this room. Mr. Rowe found out about it and like a fiddler, he hit the roof. You see, we found your shorts and a sheath in the room of Mrs. Ormanda Gunderstansen. <gasps> Not her. Keep going. Jesus! Oh no, Daddy-o. Jesus had nothing to do with it. This time, the chauffeur fact. That's disgusting. How could you debase yourself by sleeping with the help? <laughs> you sure like to laugh, don't you, Fruity? My mom went the same. It got so she used to laugh at anything. Even air. Well, leave 
the poor woman alone. I implore you. Don't you think she's been through it now? Oh, she's been through it, all right. Did she ever tell you what happened to her husband? Yes. He died in the war, in a concentration camp. Yes, he did. When he fell out of his gun tower. Isn't that right, Fraulein? No, oh, you must be mistaken. No, she is Miss Tocken. Miss Hilda von Tocken. Daughter of German parents, wife of a German officer, mother of a German son, German of a German German. I mean, come on! Oman the Gandersten son? Didn't anybody think that sounded just a little bit made up? I thought it was Swedish. Well, you fought wrong, Pappy. The old girl's a Nazi and a nut, and she smells like piss and biscuits. Look at her. If you asked her what day it was, she'd draw you a picture of her ass. She's despicable. But is she liable to commit murder? Now, you've all got your reasons. But who's got the kahunas? The stiff was found in a puddle on the floor. The wounds were caused by what appears to be a thin blade. So what was the weapon? Ice. A shard of ice. It could have flown in from the window, killed him, and then melted. Or the murderer came in through the window, scared the piss out of him, and kept the weapon. Nice try, Taylor, but it ain't that cold. A big nail? <laughs> if you two were any more wrong, you'd both be Michael Bolton. Now, despite the mess you reprobates caused, no dough was actually taken. Mr. Oman Nagansasun was stabbed 38 times by a very distinct weapon. So let's assume the weapon had some sort of significance to the killer. Something short, thin, pointy, and with a purpose. Are you saying he was dead to death? I'm just saying that everything about this case means something to someone. Even if the files I read on the way over all point towards burglary. But when all the evidence points to one specific conclusion, and that conclusion is usually correct. Unless it's incorrect. There were signs of a forced entry from outside, a struggle in a room containing valuable documents, and a murder that seemed frantic and unplanned. But the alibis are weak and the motives are strong. A few hours digging and these perps are singing like Sharon. I don't... Sh who? Elk. Sharon Elk, John's wife. She can't sing. Well, look, uh, I don't know who killed Mr. Ormond de Gonstanson, or how, or why, or who the bloody hell the Elks are. Maybe you're just a better policeman than me. Hey, don't piss on your own face, Inspector. You've done very well since Turnlow's. That dreadful housing estate. Born in a house to parents, you had it all. But you couldn't help yourself. You wanted more. When you were five years old, you stole sherbet from the local shop. How did you... I pulled your prints when I got the call. Your father dragged you, kicking and screaming, to the station to, as you limeys like to call it, put the dicks up you. Uh, Willies. Grow up, hand cream. The cops took your prints and filed them for kicks. Your father, who was playing hot potato, tried to get you three years, but the fuzz wouldn't play ball. And that's when he told you. Told you that you were adopted, and that is when little Georgie Mott ran away. Let's just stick to the case at hand, shall we? You know, you look adopted. Rounded shoulders, weird legs, kind of stumpy looking. Telltale signs of a calcium deficiency. What's the matter? Didn't get enough of Mama's sweetened moo juice? You're not a lie, detective. Two days later, Daddy's little soldier was caught and shipped off to Oman de Gonson's unwanted children's home. Ring her! Yeah, I'll give it a day, maybe two. Women can smell desperation. Anyway, you hated your parents. You hated that place and you hated the other kids. You couldn't stand the beatings, the wedgies, the atomic wedgies, the power they had over you. So you ran. You ran all the way to the force. No one was going to take anything away from you anymore. I'm warning you. I'll have your badge. And do what? Kill it like you killed that old hooker you busted? The one that claimed to be your mom? Slice it with the letter opener that you used to open the birth certificate? The piece of paper that proved that she was your mom and gave you the name of your real father? The father who disowned you? The father who didn't want to know you? The slut-loving son of a bitch who took everything away from you from the day you were born? The man you stabbed 38 times with the letter opener once for every damn year that you've drawn breath? You bastard! Oh, <laughs> Okay, officers. You can come in now. You know, it would have been a perfect crime if it wasn't for all your dumb mistakes. You think you've heard the end of this, Ringer? Wherever you go, where? What a dick. What happens now, Detective? Now, 
Now, Mr. Taylor, you're all under arrest. You got Taylor the Nailer and Sophie the Trophy for fraud, Pan Cream for embezzlement, and the ex Mrs. O for breaking an inner ring. You have a two? Yeah, necrophilia.